Are you ready for the World Series? It starts tomorrow with the Dodgers facing off against the Boston Red Sox. You know, the Fall Classic got us remembering a Major League legend that got his start playing American Legion baseball here in the Magic City. We're talking about Dave McNally. He won two World Series rings with the Baltimore Orioles. To this day, he remains the only pitcher to hit a grand slam in the World Series. When you were standing here on the mound at Cobb Field in those days, did you have visions of big league baseball? I mean, well, sure, I think everybody did. That's Q2's Andy Price talking with Dave McNally back in 1999 at the old Cobb Field. The same diamond he got his pitching start on for the American Legion Post 4 team. In 1960, Billings went all the way to the championship game at the Legion World Series, and McNally was known, even back then, as a star player. You know, when he was playing a Legion baseball, it wasn't a matter of if he was going to win the game, it was whether it was going to be a one or no hitter. A lot of us that rode around on his coattails, uh, just because of, of Dave, there's a lot of people that got scholarships and uh, that wouldn't have got any exposure from Billings, Montana. After Legion ball, McNally signed with the Baltimore Orioles. The plan was to start him in Class B, but the Orioles thought first they'd give him a quick shot at double-A. Well, I pitched about 19 innings in double-A, gave up like 19 hits, 19 runs, 19 walks, 19 strikeouts, and they said, see you later. Initial setbacks aside, McNally got to the bigs in September of 62. In 1966, the Orioles are the new world champions. He and other Orioles pitchers combined to give up only two runs the entire four-game sweep of the L.A. Dodgers, the defending champs. Four years later, they'd do it again. That was 1970, when McNally stepped to the plate with bases loaded and became the only pitcher ever to hit a World Series Grand Slam, even to this day. I was not a good hitter. <laughs> if you threw me a fastball about belt high on the inside third of the plate, I could hit it. Other than that, I couldn't hit anything. On the win, nine to three. Is Dave McNally happy? McNally retired in 1975, but would leave one final legacy on his way out. He joined a famous labor fight against Major League Baseball and won, freeing players from being tied to their teams even after their contracts expired. In other words, Dave McNally helped usher in the era of free agency. He saw it as a way to help other players. When we had those really good teams in Baltimore, we had some really great players in AAA that were just, you know, three years in AAA hitting 330 and 335 that couldn't, couldn't come up and, and they couldn't go elsewhere. So it helped everybody, I think. After retiring, McNally came back home and got into the car business. It seemed after years of fame, he was ready for the quiet life. I can go anywhere in Billings and never get noticed. Or, and, and if I go back to Baltimore, I go in any restaurant and they start screaming at me. And it's a funny situation. Why don't you go back and watch the series? You know, your team's in it and everything, former ball player. Well, because there's too much chaos at those things. It's absolutely chaotic, and the, I have a very nice color television set, and the drinks are cheaper at my house. <laughs> okay. One of the Magic City's favorite sons, Dave McNally, died of cancer back in 2002, but his legacy lives on. There's a bronze statue of him that adorns the entrance to Dealer Park. And by the way, you heard Scott mention that McNally being optioned to Class B baseball. Class B baseball doesn't exist now, but it did until 1963, along with the C and the D leagues.